I come from a very religious family. My dad's very religious. He was the kind of guy who'd go preach on the streets. And he used to only have one old man who'd come listen to him. He'd be like, oh, yeah, come on, give me the word. And I remember one time he's preaching. I'll never forget this. I was nine years old. He's like, you got to believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on the cross. And this one guy's walking by. He's like, hey, man, why don't you shut up? And my dad just kept on going. So the guy pushed my dad. And my dad punched him in the face. And this old man who never said anything, he leaped to his feet. And he's like, that man may not believe in Jesus' cross, but he's definitely going to believe in the right cross. <laughs> My dad got all cocky. He's like, yeah, he's lucky he didn't get up or he would have caught the second coming. (laughs) I grew up in a very sheltered neighborhood. Uh, When I was 16, this girl moved in my neighborhood. She She was totally everything my parents hated. She had tattoos on her body. She was older. And eventually she invited me over to her place. And she's like, so Steven, do you like marijuana? And I was like, yeah, I like marijuana. I like whatever you like. I didn't even know what it was. I was just like, yeah, I like whatever. I'm thinking so hot. And she's like, cool, why don't you roll some joints for us? And I literally looked at her and started going. Is that enough joint rolling for you, girl? Yeah. I never saw her again. I don't know what happened. I live in LA. I have a gay, uh, I have a gay roommate. And it's really cool having a gay roommate, you know what I mean? Because they're so unpredictable. I remember walking in the place, and he's like, Steven, check out my $500 Gucci boots. Mm, what you know about these $500 Gucci boots? You know nothing about these $500 Gucci boots. And I was like, that's great, man. Where's the rent? <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't got it. But there's this party in the Hollywood Hills tonight. It's going to be crazy. Don't worry. I'm driving. You can drink. A party in the Hollywood Hills, that's a mansion party. So I'm like, let's go. We get outside. Literally, I know he had just traded his car in for a motorcycle. So he's like, Steven, get on. You hear the engine? He goes, rim, rim, rim. I'm like, that's not an engine. That's just a gay ghost. Just rim, rim, rim. So we get to the party, and the party's actually sick. Right when we get there, just... I could do my baby dance that, you know what I mean? Just... You want to dance? No? Okay. Two hours of this passes by. I finally got used to the bathroom. I started hitting the bathroom. I'm just like... And I see this dude hooking up with this other dude, and I'm like, ah! But you know when you see something, you don't know if it's real, so you gotta look back to make sure. (laughs) I do that move, and I see those Gucci boots. (laughs) I was like, oh, Eric! He's like, oh, Steven! (gasps) I got the rent. It's cool because like he wanted to join the military and I'm happy they dropped the don't ask, don't tell policy. You know what I mean? Because gay guys make things happen. In fact, I think they should give gay guys their own military because they make stuff happen, okay? Like they would tell, they're like, okay, listen, we're going to invade by nine, take over by three and be back for apple martinis by five. <laughs> like if they were invading, could you imagine that? Just send a helicopter. <laughs> oh no, the Marines are attacking. <laughs> it's not the Marines, it's the Marinas. They cheer in the military. Gay guys love cheering. They would take advantage of that. They'd be like, I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Next week, there's a sale on shoes and clothes. (laughs) And they would stick to policy, too. They'd be like, we're the marinas. We never leave a man's behind. (laughs) Thank you very much. I'm Stephen Briggs. (laughs) 